Good morning. It's a wonderful day. It's been such a, a great uh, lectureship. I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed uh, being here and getting to hear the lesson, lessons each, uh, each uh, uh, service. And I, I don't know about you, but I could probably just do this right on and on. It's, it's so good. You have to have a, a, a stopping point sometimes. But um, uh, the, the wonderful thought is that w one day, uh, being with, with the Lord in heaven, it will never cease. We're so thankful for that, to be together uh, throughout eternity, and I'm so uh, so glad to know that. But I, I want to say, first of all, I'm very privileged and feel very honored to be able to uh, be a part of the school, be a student of the school. I never thought this would ever uh, happen in my life, but uh, I'm so thankful for those who have uh, supported me and helped me to be able to be a student here and for the instructors and to be able to stand as a as a student and say I I can say with honor uh, I'm proud to represent Tri-C School of Preaching and Christian Development so I thank you so much well if you would take your Bible please uh, this morning uh, turn to Psalms 116 and the topic that's been given to me has already been been told a thankful heart and so that's what we'll look at this morning from Psalms 116. And so if you will uh, bear with me just a minute, we will get uh, a few, uh, just a few verses right here. Uh, we will look at some of the, uh, some of the verses throughout the Psalm, but we will, we will just read a couple of verses. Uh, the verse we're going to look at, the main text, would be Psalms 116, verse number 12. Psalms 116, verse number 12. And then we'll read verse number 17 as well. The psalmist said in Psalms 116, verse 12, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? And then let's look at verse number 17. The Bible tells us, he says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. And this verse has been, been just, just helping me looking at it, studying it, in the verse number 12, uh, what shall I render, he says, unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? And we can see that this is a question. And we'll try to answer that the best way we can. And we'll look at three points we'll use by application and look at some scripture uh, when we look at this verse and this thought uh, of a thankful heart. I want to say, by the way of introduction, first of all, we know to be truly thankful a person must realize that he has received something from someone. That's just very elementary. And so we must know that. It's been said this way, a man can never be genuinely thankful until he recognizes where the things he possesses come from. And then he goes on to say, this, this man who made this statement, for we do not thank someone for something unless we know who is responsible for us having it. When I read that statement, I thought of what James said in James 1.17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. We know where our blessings come from. We know who to turn thanks from uh, to. We know who the one with our thankful heart should be directed to, and that's our God. And he has been so good to each one of us. I can say that for myself. I know you can speak for yourself that God has been good, good to you. In these two verses we just read, uh, we want to just take a look at these and, and, and try to answer, first of all, just briefly on what he's saying right here in the, in the question or how to answer that question. And I've pondered it and, and thought on it a lot, uh, studying on it. I've read various places just trying to get that settled. On what is he saying, and what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? And I began to think on that. What is he saying? It's like this. It's like this would be my comparison. If I would accumulate everything I own, everything that I have, and all that God has done for me, if I knew everything that he had done for me and accumulated it, in one pile and looked at that, that and say, is this enough? Would this be sufficient to thank God with? And I believe the psalmist is saying uh, in this question, question or asking this question, what, what shall I render unto the Lord? 
And when we begin to think about that, if we, if we just really put that on that scale, there's really nothing that we have, really, just to be honest with you, or really nothing that we could totally do to fully express our gratitude to God for all he's done for us. Now, that's, that's, a big, that's a big statement right there, and that's a large picture. And I know God has given us commands, things that he wants us to do. And we should do those things with a thankful heart always. But when it comes on that scale of how great God is and how merciful, the Bible says his mercy endures forever several times. And we think about the greatness and the vastness of God and all that he's done for us. Really, if we put it all together, all that we could accumulate within every individual in this room uh, this morning, it would not even be a drop in the bucket to touch, uh, listen, what God has done for us and showing our grateful, our grateful hearts. But I think that's what he's trying to express to us in that verse right there, saying to us, saying simply, what shall I render unto the Lord? And that's something that he couldn't really do, but in the psalm, we'll find that there's some things he said, I will do. There's some things that we can do. And so he said, I will offer the, the sacrifice of thanksgiving in, giving in verse number 17. And I'd like to read this statement here. I thought it was a good statement as well. Uh, one writer said, Being thy servant, I am bound to sacrifice to thee, and having received spiritual blessings at thy hands, I will not bring bullock or goat, but I will bring that which is more suitable, namely the thanksgiving of my heart, my inmost soul shall adore thee in gratitude. And he's saying just simply, I can't, what I've got is not sufficient. But what I can do is give him a thankful heart and be thankful to God. We will say uh, some things about that, about as far as today and, and the day we're living in as far as thank, thankfulness. But. When we think about thankfulness, think about this word, thankful, T-H-I-N-K-F-U-L, thankful. A thankful heart will, have a, will be a thankful heart. When we think about the word thankful, we've probably never thought of this before, but the uh, old Anglo-Saxon word for thankful, thankfulness, was actually thankfulness. That's where we really get our from that, from that Anglo-Saxon, and even in the Old English, if you'll look at the Old English word, it defines thankfulness as thoughtfulness. So really, you cannot have a thankful heart unless you have a thankful heart. We have to think. We have to think about how good God has been and recognize his blessings on us. So, it's obvious we are living in an unthankful day. Uh, it was said uh, through one of the speakers, I, I, I caught this and I pinned it down. He said in Timothy's day, he said in his day and around him and surrounding him, uh, it, it was pinned in 2 Timothy chapter number 3 verses 1 through 4. He said, this know also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemer, di blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, and here it is, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And maybe that's the problem today. People are not thankful today because they just got too much stuff. They've got too many pleasures. And we're living in a day of ingratitude. We were taught growing up, and I'm sure you were, to say thank you. Thank you. We're trying to teach our grandchildren that. We should teach this next generation that simple word of saying thank you. But also, for us who are Christians, it should be a spontaneous uh, reaction from our heart through our lips to say thank you, God, each and every day. We should not have to be told or taught to say thank you to God. When I begin to look and survey all the things that God has done for me, it's not very hard to say thank you. But in the psalmist's uh, words right here, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits uh, toward me? I would like to look at some things uh, and make some applications and look at some different places throughout the scripture on this thought of a thankful heart. And the first thing is this. We're going to look at remembering God with a thankful heart. Remembering God with a thankful heart. 
He said, what shall I render? So he's thinking about that. What can I render? And that word render is a very, uh, very important word. And that word render simply means uh, to turn back. It also means to pay back. You think on that just for a moment. But here, how can we have a thankful heart? How can we see that remembering God with a thankful heart, as the psalmist did? This is, this is really, really, I think, maybe the most important point of this, this, uh, this lesson. Because if we can't get that first, then none of the rest will even matter. But how many of us thought of God this morning? And so here it is, remembering with personal gratitude. That's how we have a thankful heart. Remembering God with a thankful heart has to begin with personal gratitude. And that's what we find right here. The psalmist said in Psalms 1, uh, 16, verse 12, What shall I render unto the Lord? Then he says in verse number 17, I will offer to thee. You see, he took that personal. And we all must take that personal. And having a thankful heart, no one can thank God for us. We need to thank God from our own hearts. But here we find throughout the psalm, the psalmist is thinking on what the Lord has done for him. And notice he's remembering the Lord. In verse number one, we'll look at this. The Bible says, I love the Lord because he hath heard, heard my voice and my supplication. And he's remembering the times that he's called upon God and God has heard his cry. He's thinking on that. And then he says in verse number two, uh, he says this, because he hath, know that these are past tense words, and he begins to recollect and think about what God hath done. And then he also says as well, in verse number nine, he says this, he says that I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Let me get back to my verse. I missed the verse there. I, I apologize for that. He says in verse number eight, not verse number nine, he says, for thou hast delivered my soul. He's reflecting back, thinking, remembering. He also says this. He says in, in verse number uh, 7, he says, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. And see, what the psalmist is doing is remembering and thinking back of what God has done. He took it personal of what God has done for him. And so when we think about that, Sometimes we're prone to forget. The psalmist said in Psalms 103, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Or, or, no, he says this. Let, let me get this verse. I'm thinking of Psalms 107, but Psalms 103, verse number 1. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. And in verse number 2, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Forget not. Let's not forget our God. Let's have a thankful heart. I want to give you two illustrations of, of men who forgot to thank God in, under this point. The first one we'll find in first King, or Second Kings chapter number 20, his name was Hezekiah. If you remember, Hezekiah was sick unto death, and he was about to die. He turned his face to the wall, and he prayed, and God healed him. And God gave him, what, 15 more years to live. But notice, after God did that for him, he forgot to be thankful the Bible tells us in, in, uh, in, in Chronicles, uh, if I can find my place, 2 Chronicles 32, verse 24. The Bible says this, In those days Hezekiah was sick to death and prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. Verse 25, But Hezekiah rendered not according to the benefit done unto him. The psalmist said in, in the text verse, he said that what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Here's Hezekiah, God did something for him, healed him, gave him 15 more years to live, and he failed to be thankful. He forgot to thank God for what he did for him. And I thought also of this right here, this thing of remembering to be thankful. Uh, the Bible says this, and, and another example is with a man by the, well, I don't give his name, but uh, we think of Joseph, we think about the, the butler and the, and the baker. Do you remember that story? And they were both in, in prison. And the chief butler, he, he failed and forgot to thank God and remember God. Yes, he was in, in, in the jail. And um, in Genesis chapter number 40, I'll read just a verse or two there to give you that thought. 
In Genesis chapter number 40, the Bible tells us in verse number 1, And it came to pass after these things that the butler and the king of Egypt and his baker had offended the Lord, their king of Egypt. And the Bible tells us, and Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the, the butlers and against the chief of the bakers, and he put them in ward in the house of the captain in the guard, of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And they were in there, and Joseph, remember, had that dream. He received that dream. And the Bible tells us this in Genesis chapter 40, verse number 8. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God. And he was going to tell them their dream, but he told them it would come from God. And he told them the dream. And here's what he says in Genesis chapter number 40. The Bible tells us this in verse number 6, or I mean in verse, uh, verse number 9. The Bible tells, and the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded. And he goes on to begin to tell the dream. And then he goes to the, uh, the, the, the next one, and he, he begins to tell him his dream. And here's what happened. The chief butler and the, and the baker, or the chief butler and the chief baker, baker they, they both had their dreams interpreted. But guess what? One of them, well, neither one of them remembered Joseph, did they? They forgot him, and they failed in that area to remember God and his goodness in that area of interpreting the dream for them. So the chief butler, here's what he did. He forgot to remember with a thankful heart. And we, we know in Genesis 40, 23, the Bible tells us, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. And those two examples gives us an example of people just in those who have forgotten what God had done for them. And they failed to be thankful. Another example uh, that we'd like to give this morning is found in the, in the book of, of Luke. We'll look at in Luke in just a moment. But if you'd like to turn to Luke 17, you can. But while you're turning there, I'll go ahead and say the next example in our point uh, number two is this. On a thankful heart, number two. Let's talk about returning to God with a thankful heart. Returning to God. When we look at the psalmist back in Psalms 116 and some things that he said right here in verse number 12, here's what he said. What shall I render, render unto the Lord? Remember I told you that word means to turn back. It means to pay back. And so we want to look at that just a minute. Well, here's an example right here in Luke chapter number 17. Of the ten lepers, we know them well. And we want to find one who returned to give thanks. And so, under the first point, we've looked at with personal gratitude, returning with personal gratitude. We want to look at this and see also with the psalmist of returning a thankful heart. I call it with praising gratitude. Praising gratitude. What the psalmist said in Psalms 116 and verse number 7 is, is very, very interesting. He says this, he says, I will offer a return unto the, thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. And he goes on to say, I will offer, I will offer, verse 17, to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And what's he mean by this thing of offering? I begin to study that word out, and the word offer here means to praise. It also means adoration. It means thanksgiving is what it means. Of his benefits or his bestowment towards us. You know, when I, when I say praise, I'm sometimes hesitant because I know what the denominational, defi denominational world defines praise and how they look at praise. But praise is not always outward, you understand. It's, a, it's inward. And we know this morning that we can praise our God sitting right here on the pew. We should praise our God. And so the psalmist said, I will offer the offering uh, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I'm going to offer that to him. There's really nothing I can do, but I can or give him uh, to return to him this gratitude that I feel within me, but I can, but I can have a thankful heart. I can return to him this offering, if you want to say, uh, of thanksgiving to the Lord. And this is what the psalmist is, is wanting to do right here. 
returning with his praising gratitude of all of his benefits. Now, notice what he says in verse 17. He says, I will offer to thee. That's directional. First it was personal. Now it's directional. Then he goes to say, sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. That's directional. And everything was directed towards God from the psalmist's heart right here. I don't name the psalmist because he's not named. We don't know who wrote this psalm, really. I couldn't find anyone uh, to tell me who wrote this psalm. So he's an, uh, an unnamed psalmist, and that's not important to give his name anyway. The important thing is that we can follow in his example right here of his attitude and desire uh, to give God thanksgiving and to show him praise. So now we're going to look at this man in Luke chapter 17. But before we do, uh, Hebrews 13, 15 is, and verse 16 are two good, uh, good scripture to think about this morning. It says this, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise, notice this, to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And then it says, But to do good and communicate, forget not for... With such sacrifices, God is well pleased. And so to communicate, that's a way of showing thanksgiving to others. But also our lips, the fruit of our lips. The fruit of our lips. When's the last time you just thank God verbally? Be good. Maybe you might be shy. I don't want to do it around someone. Do like me. Go down to the barn. There's nothing down there but my dog anyhow. He wouldn't care. But sometimes I just like to get alone and, and, and talk verbally to God. You say, you don't have to do No, you don't have to do that. But that helps me in hearing my voice, calling out and thanking God. But anyway, this is what we're seeing right here in Luke chapter 17 uh, with these ten lepers. So we'll give you this thought right here uh, just for a few minutes as we have time. In Luke chapter 17, verses number 11, the Bible tells us, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten, ten, uh, ten men that, uh, that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their, their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? I don't want to be caught up with that group of nine, do you? I don't want to live a life to go through life enjoying the blessings of God and never, ever turn back and thank God for it. But here's what the Bible says. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, said, we're not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? That shows us that God is interested in a thankful heart. He wants to know where the other nine are. May he not look throughout his church and say, where are they? Where are their hearts? Where's their thankful heart? And Jesus was wondering where, well, he knew where they were. He told them where to go. They were going to show themselves to the priest. I think this is very interesting. The one that turned back, very logically, it's very logically in thinking that, logical in thinking that the other nine were possibly Jews. To think about it, the one that came back was a Samaritan. Now listen. Could he have even went and showed himself to a priest? I don't think he would have been able even to go to the, uh, the temple, wherever the priest was, to show himself to the priest. He would not have been accepted being a Samaritan, would he? I don't think he would. But he did obey the Lord. He did go on his way. But when he saw that he was healed, he said, I can't go on with you. I'm not going to be with that unthankful crowd. I'm not just going to walk away from what the Lord has done for me. And he chose by himself, though he was the minority, he chose not to go with the crowd, the unthankful crowd. And he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down uh, at his feet, on his face, giving thanks unto God. And Jesus was wondering where the rest of them were. I will tell you the rest of them were. They were more interested in showing themselves to the priest 
that their leprosy could be seen, that it was gone, so they could be put back into society, they could be put back into their family, and they were selfish-minded. That's why people are not thankful today. They're more thoughtful toward themselves than they are God. But Jesus said, where are the nine? Where are the nine? But one did return and give God the thanks and give God the praise. And we see that great example by one who's despised by the Jews and the one here that's considered a foreigner, by the way, belonging to another nation. And we, we won't get into time on that. We can look back in 2 Kings and, and see how that came about, about through the Assyrian captivity. We won't do that, but I, I just want you to know that these Samaritans were despised by the Jews, rejected, considered foreigners, outcasts. But on top of that, he was a leper as well. Not only that, he had to go around crying unclean. So, boy, I want to tell you, he was in a bad shape, was he not? He was not only rejected by men because of, his, because of who he was, but also because of his... Uh, mixed race or mixed blood if you want to say but he's also being rejected because he's a leper or he had it bad but there was one who heard his cry and I'm so thankful when I look at this this point right here that he returned to God with a thankful heart returning with praising gratitude because of this this we saw two man two men who didn't remember to be thankful but now we're seeing one man that return because of his focus, his focus, he was thankful. What did he do? He focused on what the Lord had done for him. The Bible tells us this. In verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. Simply, he saw what God had done for him. And by seeing that, by seeing what the Lord had done, his heart was full of gratitude. We may need to take a, uh, listen, take a inventory and just look at what God has done for you. Look at what God has brought you through. There's a, there's a song I heard years ago, and I just barely remember the lyrics. said, look what God has done for you. Look what God has brought you through. Look what he's brought you through. We sang Amazing Grace the other night. The last verse always touches me, does it? Not you. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. God knows every trap the devil's ever put out there. Every snare that he's ever laid in your pathway and mine. I'm so thankful that we'll follow his God. And if we'll walk in the light, 1 John 1, 7, it says in the light. We can have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we'll walk in this light right here, we'll be able to avoid all those hidden snares and traps and all those things. But look what God has done for you. Look what God has brought you through. He's done what no other can do. Look what God has done for you. And that's what the leper was doing. He was looking upon what God had done for him. He saw that his leprosy is gone. And what a great blessing. The excitement that he had, no doubt, that I can't go on with that unthankful crowd. I look at what God's done for me. I like to be around those Christians with a grateful heart that loves our God, that wants to magnify and glorify and praise him, and just live a life that would please him. That's what my desire is. And this man turns back. I guess he thought, well, it won't do me any good to go show myself to the temple, uh, to the priest down there. He probably won't even give me the okay or give me the time. But Jesus took time for me when nobody else would. And he in turn turned back with a grateful heart, thanked him. And so in thinking about that Samaritan, I also thought of the Samaritan in John chapter 4. Remember in John chapter 4, Jesus said he must needs go through Samaria. Why did he say that from traveling through, uh, through Samaria, uh, to, to, uh, from Judea, Jerusalem? They wouldn't even go through Samaria. They would go around Samaria because they'd have no dealings with the Jews. And look what happens with this woman. She comes to draw water, brings her water pot. Jesus was set on the well because he was wearied with his, wearied with his journey. He was tired. And he came and he had a conversation with this woman about water. It went to physical water, then it went to spiritual water. And before you know it, she said, give me this water so I may not thirst again. You know what she did? Well, first he dealt with her about her sin, did he not? After dealing with her about her sin, and she had an honest and good heart, no doubt. And then she left her water part, pots and went back and told the men all things that the Lord had told him, told her. She said this, her focus was in the right place. Come see a man that told me all things ever I did. 
And I don't know about you, I don't think I would have followed her, would you? I mean, who would want to follow her so a man could tell me all things that ever I did? But guess what? They did. They followed, they came back, and they believed that he was the Messiah because her focus was on what God had done for her. And so that's what she did. The focus, to have a, to have a thankful heart, yes, we must have our focus in the right place, in the right place. And I'm so thankful today. If we didn't have anything today at all, materialistically, we still should give him thanks. He is worthy of that. And even to the very, have you ever thought about the very blessings that we have, even to the very grains of salt in our salt shaker? Years ago, salt was a rare commodity, a very, very priceless thing to have. It's just commonplace today. It don't mean anything. It don't have much value. But I want to tell you, even down to the very salt in our salt shakers, we are to be thankful. But also, let me give you uh, one more point right here on a thankful heart. And so we're going to uh, try to move on because we have so much here to cover. There's no way uh, that we can cover it all. I would like to go back to that Psalms 107, verse 1 and 2, talking about with our lips. Uh, the Bible says in Psalms 107, verse number 1, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse number 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. If you look at Psalms 107 and four other verses, verse 8, verse 15, and verse 21 and verse 31, they'll all say the same thing. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Told it four times in Psalms 107 with the lips. We ought to praise him and thank him. So by that also Psalms 40 came to our mind. Uh, you'll read in the, the psalmist in Psalms 116, he's going back being thank, uh, with a thankful heart, thinking of what the Lord had done for him. And one of the things that he said was in verse number 2, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. When I read that, I thought, boy, that sounds just like David. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. My mind went to Psalms 40. You remember that? David, the psalmist says, he said he was in a horrible pit. He said this right here. He said simply, he said, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my cry. He inclined unto me, he said, and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And I put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall sit and fear, and many shall trust in the Lord. And that's what he said. But if we stopped right there, Psalms 40, verse number 5, Many, O Lord, he said, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. And he goes on to say, And thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be rendered in order up unto thee. He said, if I, oh, I like this. He said, if I would declare and speak of them. Notice what he says. They are more than can be numbered. The songwriter, or the hymn writer said, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Do you know the largest number that can even be put into the mind? Do you know what it is? Here's what it is. Write a 10 and put 100 zeros after that 10. That's the largest number that can be computed. 10 with 100 zeros. It's actually, I don't know if I pronounce it right, it's called a Googleplexion, Googleplexion. It's a 10 with 100 zeros. I thought about the largest number that can even be computed. The psalmist said the things that the Lord did in Psalms, one, one, uh, Psalms 40, verse number 5, he said they cannot even be numbered. Cannot even be numbered. Now, when we think about that, and we try to count our blessings and name them one by one, can't do it. We cannot do it. Even the largest number cannot do it. And should we not be thankful, have a thankful heart? Let me give this last point. With a thankful heart, not only in returning or remembering and returning to God with a thankful heart, but this was the tough one. How about in repaying God with a thankful heart? Is there any way that we can do that? Well, the psalmist said, I will offer the, the, the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. And so he's realizing I have really nothing. There is nothing. I have nothing to repay. But I will, I will do what I can do and say thank you. I will live for you. 
I will remember what you've done for me. My mind with Acts 17, verse number 24. God that made the worlds and all things, and seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Verse 25, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to life, giveth to all life and breath and all things, all things. But we need to show our gratitude now by repaying. How do we do that with public gratitude? We looked at personal gratitude, praising gratitude, but now with public gratitude. And that's where the church comes in. In Acts 2.47, we know what the Bible says. Well, the Bible says the Lord added daily to the church, did he not? Uh, daily such, such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church such as should be saved. I like when it goes on Acts 2.47, and I have not found a, a, a really satisfying uh, definition or commentary with this when it says, and they had favor with all men. They had favor with all men. I've looked at that and looked at that. I've looked at everything that I can find just to get something that would satisfy my question on this. What does that mean? Does it mean that the church themselves was showing favor to all men? Or those without the church were showing favor to the church? Well, if you look up the word favor, it does have the definition of graciousness, gratitude. And if you look at it, it says thanks worthy. Thank. So maybe it could be that the church, the early church, was just so thankful. How could you repay? How can we repay as a church? Well, looking back at what the Lord has done for us. Isn't it wonderful to receive the remission of sins? Isn't that just the greatest thing? They've just been added to the church. They're, they have all things common. They're together. I mean, can you not see the joy that they must have had in society that day of what the Lord has done for them, forgiving them of their past sins, and here they've been added to the church, and now they're, they're, having, they're having favor with all the people. Very well could be they could go around with a grateful heart, with gracious attitude, and maybe that was a reflection in society. Can I make a point right here? Maybe because the church was growing, I know they were evangelizing, I know the world was going everywhere, but maybe it could also be in the condition of their heart that they were not just telling it, they were showing it as they went out in society. We're thankful with grateful hearts. And maybe if we get back to having grateful hearts, we might see more of a growing church. Maybe. Maybe. But anyway, I'm thankful for the church as we see they had favor with all the people. I won't be able to finish this up, but if you want to look sometimes about that uh, thanksgiving offering it's called a peace offering you'll find it in Leviticus chapter 7 you can read about it. it's very interesting when you read about that but one of the things I read about that offering when they brought that meat to offer up that thanksgiving offering right there I read this that that was the only offering that could be offered up that they actually got to eat that meat and I know they gave it to the priests too a certain portion they got to eat but also read this that they also was able to share that offering with others. I thought, wow, should that not be what we should do? They brought it to the priest, and they showed it before the Lord. They offered it before the Lord. But not only did they show it, they shared it. And that's what we should do. We should show our thanksgiving, our thankful hearts to God first and share that with others around us. And so this is the, the thought that I'd had and I, I, after... Spending much time, we've had plenty of time to prepare for this lectureship. I've got more content than I can give. But I, I just wanted to give you some of the things and touch some of the highlights of what I have studied out. Though we can never repay God for all of his benefits, though we can never accumulate enough things, I don't think there's enough words we could ever say. I really don't. But I'll tell you what we ought to do. We ought to try. We ought to try and have a thankful heart. Thank you for this opportunity.